Well, you took your sweet ass time coming here. Let's get down to brass tacks. We need to get this thing moving if we want to keep the element a surprise. You've done some great work for us up to this point, and we're hoping to use your unique abilities to aid us once again. Thanks to the task my subordinates have delegated to you, the NCR now has a unique opportunity. We now have a chance to take the fight to those bastards on their home turf. I'm in the beginning stages of planning out an assault on the fort. I've made calls to our allies, and they're on their way to our position. Once our forces are in place and garrison here, we'll begin our assault. Sir, I don't know what happened. A bunch of Legionnaires just stormed into the power station. Into the power station? How is that possible? I don't know, sir. There was some talk of them entering through the clog intake tunnels, but I don't have any confirmation. On my way up here, there was some chatter about their commander, the Legate, I think he's called, set up at some kind of base on the eastern bank. Okay, listen here. Unless we can get some additional support, I'm gonna need you to help me resolve. You need to make your way to this camp they have on the eastern bank and take out the Legate. That should hamstring this attack. Thanks for your support. I'll make sure the NCR emergency radio... Good gracious. The Legion is using the intake tunnels to storm their way into the dam. Okay.
I knew it! Alpha Squad reporting in. Thanks for the support back there. We've been assigned to ensure you make it to the Legate. How can we be of assistance? You're in charge of this operation. 
That sounds like a suicide mission, but our orders are to take commands from you. Unit, let's move out. yourself and I may let you live. Who are you to come before me? You bear the insignia of the bear. Enough words. Death to profligate. Had enough? Had enough?
That's a fine bit of work back there. Truth told, I'm surprised you made it out of there in one piece. You and the dam. I'm impressed to say the least, and that's no easy thing. You've secured NCR's future. The administration... Least we could do. And seeing those shits of Caesar kicking dirt as they ran, did my heart good, let me tell you. Might see some recruitment number rise. Build some morale out in the Mojave long enough for the NCR to find its feet again. All due to you. Again, you have my thanks. And all the West, too. Once they pass it over the radio. After signing the right release forms. Of course not. You earned it. Rest up. Kind of curious how this is going to pan out in the long run. But I guess history will... And so the courier who had cheated death in the cemetery outside Good Springs cheated death once again, and the Mojave Wasteland was forever changed. The New California Republic celebrated its second victory at Hoover Dam, establishing definitive control over the entire Mojave Wasteland. Soon after, they negotiated terms to annex the Strip, Freeside, and many surrounding communities. The Mojave Wasteland, at long last, had entirely fallen under the NCR's banner. Though the courier's agenda was a mystery to many, she was honored by NCR for her support of the military at Hoover Dam. She was presented with the Golden Branch, the highest civilian decoration given by the Republic. Tabitha and Rhonda went east, through Caesar's land. Occasionally, tales of their exploits found their way back west, though few believed them. Eventually, the stories concerning the duo were collected and published and proved to be quite popular with children. Still grappling with self-doubt over his usefulness in the face of old age, Raul was never able to find peace with himself. Eventually, he left the Mojave and assumed a new name as he had done so many times before. With the help of the Gunrunners, the Boomers developed a healthy trading relationship with the NCR. Eventually, the Boomers began wandering out into the wasteland while still preventing outsiders from entering Nellis. The Brotherhood and the NCR in the Mojave Wasteland declared an official truce, despite continued hostilities between the two in the West. As per their agreement, the NCR handed over all suits of salvaged power armor, and in return, the Brotherhood helped patrol I-15 and Highway 95. The peace with NCR served to ease Veronica's worries about the Brotherhood's immediate future. Still, a distance had arisen between her and her fellow members that would never be bridged. She began secluding herself in crumbling libraries of the old world, learning of promising technologies she knew the Brotherhood would never adopt. Never weakened by NCR, the Fiends staged an attack against Camp McCarran during the Second Battle of Hoover Dam. Though NCR repulsed the Fiends, they suffered heavy losses in the process. After the NCR's victory at the dam, the followers of the Apocalypse were pushed out of Old Mormon Fort during its occupation by NCR forces. NCR further encouraged them to leave Outer Vegas entirely, and the followers had no choice but to comply. Though Arcade had not hoped for an NCR victory, he was proud of his role in the defense of Hoover Dam against the forces of Caesar's Legion. Unfortunately, when word spread that Arcade was once a member of the Enclave, he was forced out of the followers of the Apocalypse. Pursued by bounty hunters, NCR Rangers, and the Brotherhood of Steel, 
Arcade pushed deep into the eastern plains and was never heard from again. Good Springs saw more trade along I-15 after NCR gained control of the Mojave Wasteland. But with that came a heavy burden of the Republic's taxes. Some old-timers, unable to handle the cost, were forced to move on, grumbling all the while. In the years following the destruction of Cassidy Caravans, NCR used evidence of the plot to blackmail the Crimson Caravan and the Van Graffs. NCR enacted strict trade laws with little resistance, strengthening their supply lines and their position in the Mojave. Both the Van Graffs and Alice McLafferty were removed from their post in the east. During their trek west, however, their caravan was wiped out by raiders using advanced weaponry and military tactics. No cargo was taken. When questioned, the gunrunners denied any involvement, claiming they would have no public motivation for such an attack. Cass survived to see the NCR flag flying proud over Hoover Dam and thought for a moment, this is what a hero must feel like. She was about to tell the courier not to get too proud of herself. Then she figured, she knew that already. So she laughed, said fuck it all, and raised a bottle to the dam and the ones who had fought for it. As far as she was concerned, the whole thing was proof that playing out a bad hand can pay off in the end. As long as a woman like the courier was holding the cards. After their suicidal last stand at Hoover Dam, the Great Khan ceased to exist as a tribe. The few surviving members dispersed, joining up with other tribes and gangs across the Mojave, and quickly forgot their heritage. Thanks to the Courier and Lily, a cure for the Nightkin schizophrenia was found shortly after Dr. Henry's experiment concluded. Nightkin and other super mutants in the wasteland flocked to Jacobstown, and the town became known as a haven where a mutant could find peace. Lily continued to take her medicine at half doses, and although she remembered her grandchildren, her mind remained muddled and confused. Eventually, she parted ways with the courier and traveled west, seeking the remnants of her past. After the NCR victory at Hoover Dam, a temporary truce between them and the kings blossomed into a full-scale relief effort for the people. While the NCR made repeated entreaties that Freeside join the Republic, the kings steadfastly maintained their independence. With the transplant of Lupa's brain, Rex gained all of the donor's experiences traveling with the Legion. These melded well with his own memories of the Legion, and his new mind quickly adjusted to the myriad memories. Shaped up by the courier's advice, the misfits distinguished themselves during the Legion's attack on Camp Golf. Mags was finally promoted to sergeant, and the rest of the misfits received an official commendation. They continued to serve with distinction for many years. Though Novak was a low-priority target for the Legion, many of Novak's citizens died in its defense. In the weeks that followed, several bright followers returned to Novak to help restore its defenses, allowing it to remain independent of NCR. As the Battle of Hoover Dam ended, Boone confirmed what he had always suspected, that revenge would never quiet his troubled mind. Sidearm in hand, he journeyed back to California in search of the NCR officer who had led the attack on Bitter Springs. There, with only two bullets loaded, Boone did the only thing he believed would put an end to his suffering. After Hoover Dam, the leaderless powder gangers at the correctional facility vanished into the waste, leaving the prison empty. The correctional facility became another abandoned ruin in the wasteland, its carcass occasionally picked over by enterprising prospectors. After the Vault 19 powder gang surrendered to the NCR, they were reincorporated into the correctional system. The NCR did increase their sentences, and they aren't about to take off time for good behavior. After Hoover Dam, NCR helps rebuild Prim as a major stopping point on the Long 15. Though Prim citizens chafe under NCR's taxes, they benefit greatly from the increased protection and merchant traffic. Although they performed admirably during NCR's defense of Hoover Dam, 
the Rangers fell into decline soon after. With Hanlon's plot against the occupation exposed, and Oliver hailed as the NCR's new war hero, many Rangers were greeted coldly on their return home. Few openly blamed the Rangers for Hanlon's treachery, but public and political support for the organization quickly dwindled. After their bold arrival at Hoover Dam, the remnants disappeared as quickly as they came. Legends of their power spread throughout the Southwest, a reminder of why people once feared the sight of vertebrates in the sky. And so the Courier's Road came to an end, for now. In the new world of the Mojave Wasteland, fighting continued, blood was spilled, and many lived and died just as they had in the old world. Because war, war never changes.